Hello friends, let's see this particular question. What is the effect of temperature on chemi absorption? That is what your chemical adsorption, okay? And this question comprises of one mark, so just you have to write the answer, okay? So what is the answer? Answer is basically what? First increases, first increases, and then, and then, it is what your decreases okay then it is what your decreases okay now we will see the logic behind this answer okay so you see this is you can easily say by the graph okay you see this is the graph you know there are two types of adsorption one is physical adsorption and one is chemical adsorption or chemisorption okay so you see in this graph, this is what your x by m. What is this x by m? So this is what your amount of adsorbate per unit amount of adsorbent. Okay. This is also x by m versus t. This is the graph between x by m versus t. Okay. And one more thing that is very important that here pressure is what your constant. Here pressure is what your constant. So sometimes we also call it what? Physical adsorption or physisorption isobath. Okay. Physisorption isobath. Okay. Now, from this graph, it is very clear that in case of physisorption or physical adsorption, if you increase the temperature, this your tendency of adsorption what decreases or rate of adsorption what decreases as you increase the temperature. Okay. It is very clear from this graph. But you see the graph in case of chemisorption. When you increase temperature, first your amount of adsorbent per unit amount of adsorbent increases and then it is what your decreases. Okay. So first it is increases. You can see in the answer. First it is what you increases and then it is what your decreases. That you can see from the graph also. Okay. Okay. Now, what is the reason behind that? So you see, very simple. In case of physisorption or physical adsorption, suppose this is the surface, okay, because it's a surface phenomenon, okay. So this is the surface of your adsorbent. This is the surface of your adsorbent, okay. And this is what your adsorbent, okay. And you know, in adsorbent and adsorbent, this is what your adsorbent, okay. It's very simple. And it's very important also okay and this force of attraction is a very weak force of attraction that is your van der Waals force of attraction it's a very weak force of attraction okay it's a very weak force of attraction okay and that is in case of this this is what a van der Waals force of attraction okay and if you increase the temperature if you increase the temperature that means you are giving more energy to the molecules of this adsorbent and in that case if the energy is more, it will be very difficult for the surface to hold this molecule of adsorbent. Okay. So as you increase temperature, definitely this amount of adsorbent will what? Decrease. Okay. And when you are increasing the temperature, in case of physical adsorption, because the force of attraction in between, in between adsorbent and adsorbent is a weak force of attraction. Your amount of adsorbent per unit amount of adsorbent will what? Decrease. Hope it is very clear to you. Now you see in case of chemisorption. Okay, what is happening? So in case of chemisorption, if you see, again, this is the surface of what your adsorbent. This is the surface of your adsorbent. Okay. And this is what your adsorbent. Okay. And here there is a what? There is a bond formation. Okay. So, in case of chemisorption, there is a bond formation between this what? Between this surface of adsorbent and this adsorbent. Okay. This is a bond formation. Okay. And if this is bond formation, what happens? You know, for any bond formation, you know, you have to give some activation energy. You know this particular graph? Okay. So, you, you can see this is what you suppose, this is what you adsorb it, and this is what you adsorb it. Okay. So this some kind of bond formation is taking place between adsorbent and adsorbent. Okay. So 
so in that case first you have to give some activation energy okay some activation energy is required okay and this activation energy is basically the reason behind this this particular phenomena that why it is increasing so initially when you are increasing the temperature this temperature or the energy you know when you are increasing the increasing the temperature basically you are providing energy and this energy is acting as an activation energy and because of that activation energy more and more bond is forming between the surface of adsorbent and this adsorbent okay that's why that's why the amount of adsorbate per unit amount of adsorbent is what increasing okay but after certain temperature what will happen this rate of desorption will again what increase this rate of desorption will what increase and if it is again if it is going to be increase of course your amount of adsorbate per unit of amount of adsorbent will what decrease okay so the reason behind that is very simple initially this increase in temperature is facilitating the formation of bond because of it is providing some kind of energy which is you know uh, this energy is used to cross this activation barrier okay but after certain temperature after certain temperature okay what will happen this rate of desorption will again increase and in that case your rate of desorption will increase and amount of adsorbate per unit amount of adsorbent will what increase so that's why in case of chemisorption when you increase temperature first it is increasing and then it is what decreasing hope it is clear to you now come to the second question come to the second question what is the role of zinc metal in the extraction of silver again this question comprises of one mark very simple basically basically what it is doing this is zinc is basically what this is replacing sulfur replacing what replacing silver from its cyanide solution from its cyanide from its cyanide solution okay so it is what is replacing sil silver simple you can also see the equation and you must write the equation although you know i will suggest you to write the equation although it is comprised of one mark okay it is fine up to this but if you will write the equation it will be very good okay your representation will be good okay so the what is the equation this is what your equation zn plus this is what your az cn2 that's a basically complex and this is what your na here and it will give you what your na2 zn cn4 and plus az okay you can balance it also okay it's very simple to see here okay so uh, this, uh, this is not the balanced chemical equation okay and basically what is the, the you can see the oxidation state of zinc is what zero the oxidation state of this sodium is plus one and this is what your minus one the cyanide is basically what you minus one so the silver is got what you basically plus one okay and from this plus one to silver going to what you zero so basically the silver is what you reducing the silver is what you reducing and if you see the zinc here you can see the zinc is what you it is what your plus one this is minus two this is minus one and zinc is what plus two so it is what your zn2 zn plus two it is what your oxidizing so you can also write that it is what basically zinc is reducing this silver ion from this cyanide solution to this silver metal okay so you can also write that zinc is acting as a reducing agent zinc is also acting as a reducing agent okay you can see this process this process very uh, famous process and this is also known as mac arthur process okay mac arthur cyanide process and we, we use this process for gold as well as what you silver okay so this is the flow chart you can see this process but the important thing is that as far as the question is concerned this reaction is what your important and zinc is acting as a reducing agent which is reducing the silver or which is replacing the silver ion from its cyanide solution hope it is clear to you now come to the next question what is the basicity of h3po3 
very simple question what is basicity the first term is what your basicity so basicity is what you are basically number of replaceable h plus okay so it is what you basically number of replaceable replaceable h plus okay and how you will get that how many number of replaceable h plus are there in h3po3 so first you must know the structure of h3po3 and this is what you see this is the structure of h3po3 this is very important very important okay so this is what your h3po3 okay and these h are only what acidic h which are connected with what your oxygen okay this particular h is not acidic because it is what connecting with what your phosphorus and their electronegativity is almost same so this h is not acidic so only these two h are acidic although they are three hydrogen and this particular compound but only these two hydrogen which are attached with this oxygen are replaceable h plus and that's why its basicity is what your two so the answer is what two okay now there is one more thing which i want to say here this is very important there are these are h3po4 you know h3po4 h3po3 h3po2 and this is what your h3po3 okay as far as the inorganic acids are concerned you must remember these three inorganic acids where the number of h is not equals to its basicity okay it's it's very important if you know the structure of this is what your structure of oh this is the structure of this is what your structure of oh and this and these all h all three h are what your replaceable h because they are attached with what your oxygen and that's why its basicity is what your three this is also known as your phosphoric acid orthophosphoric acid okay in phosphorus acid as we saw that the basicity is what your two and in case of h3po2 the structure is like this p double bond o oh h and h and you tell me what is basicity it is what your one okay so although they are three hydrogen but the basicity is what your one okay and this is also boric acid okay although they are three hydrogen but it is only basicity is what your one because it will only replace only one h plus h2o and it will give you what boh4 minus and plus h plus so it is furnishing only one h plus so the basicity of this boric acid is what also one so you just remember these three inorganic acids where the number of hydrogen is somewhere not equals to its basicity hope it is clear